Hey, this is Jeff, and welcome back to Fallout 3, Pacifism, and more. The good news is, I sold the loot from Vault 87 in Raven Rock, and I was finally able to buy the infirmary upgrade from Moira. The bad news is, the Enclave stole the Gek, and Luz is really not looking forward to telling Elder Lions she failed. The good news is, that's not urgent, because the Enclave doesn't have the activation code. Even better, Moira keeps asking about the Robco facility every time we go in to sell loot or get her armor repaired, and Luz does have a pattern of avoiding having to process her feelings about tragedies by working on the Wasteland Survival Guide. Is that Nathan? Yes, it is. Apparently, if you don't blow up Raven Rock, he escapes and makes it back to Megaton. I always convince Eden to self-destruct, and Nathan disappears from the game, presumably killed in the explosion. I did not know that. Anyway... Couple things before we go. I delivered the letter to Ian. Oh, thank you for remembering. With everything that's going on, I almost forgot about it. You have no idea how much this means to me. Thanks so much. Good. We saw last week, if you finish Blood Ties without giving Ian her letter, she doesn't have any dialogue at all about him or their parents. You can still deliver it, which we did, so now we get that little bit of follow-up. Which... Well, I guess it's not that weird that she's cheerful because we never told her their parents are dead, and now we can't. I don't know. Maybe the game assumes that if you don't tell her during the quest, then you just don't intend to give her the bad news ever. But that's a bad assumption because there's no objective to give her an update, and resolving the situation between Arafu and the family before it boils over seems a lot more urgent. And it's not just that she's upbeat, it's what she says. Like, if you tell her you delivered the letter and she said, Oh, I guess that means everybody's okay. That would make sense. But even if you complete the quest literally the same day, she'd still be like, Oh, I forgot all about that. And when she gives you the quest, she's super concerned that she hasn't heard from them in a month. And that feels off. Hold on. Okay, it's been a few days in real life since I recorded the intro because I went down a major rabbit hole with Lucy's dialogue. I thought I remembered seeing a mod that fixed it a while back, but I looked at the Fallout unofficial patch and several dialogue fix mods and couldn't find anything. There were fixes for some of her other dialogue, but not this. So of course I decided to fix it myself, but when I looked at her dialogue, at first I wasn't even sure if there even was a bug per se, more of a design decision, which is probably why it hadn't been previously fixed. I'll explain more in the technical part at the end, but anyway, as soon as we find her... Maybe in Moriarty's? She does hang out in there a good bit. Another of those damn love letters arrived for you. Another love letter from Mr. Burke. But Lucy is not here. Yeah. Maybe in her house? She usually only goes there at night to sleep, but Fallout AI, you never know. Now where has that man got to? He's around here somewhere. Manya's lines about Nathan are a lot more poignant if you blow up Raven Rock. Well, there she is. Please tell me you have some good news. I could use it. I'm afraid not. Your parents are dead. What? No! Oh my god! I should never have left! I knew it! Now they're all dead! Wait a second. What about my brother? I found him. He's safe. Thank goodness. You have no idea how worried I was. I haven't even slept well since you left. Thanks for bringing me the news. You've really cheered me up. Good. And I even delivered your letter. Thank you for remembering. You have no idea how much this means to me. You're welcome. I have to go now. Oh, okay, well... Anytime you find yourself back in Megaton, be sure and look me up. And it only took a month for her to get some closure. Now let's read that letter from Burke. Beloved, the pain of your absence is at times crippling, but I must persevere. I must. It is very important work I am doing for mankind. Oh, but I wish I could sweep it all away to be with you now. Be patient, love. I will send for you soon. Yours very truly, Burke. Wrapped around my little finger. Yeah, you need something? Nope. I was just on my way to the clinic, which is probably shorter this Hello. way. Now, what was going to be the first new mod feature I showed you this week, 
There's a new camp, Buzz Off. <laughs> what? Jeez, Doc, I think you caught something from one of your patients. Anyway, there are 20 of them in different locations scattered around the wasteland, including one here in the Megaton Clinic. NPCs who sell chems will also occasionally have one in their inventory. Cindy Cantelli, Leo Stahl, doctors in various settlements, people like that. But since we have an ongoing problem with keeping our karma neutral, we'll just go ahead and steal this one. Assuming Doc Church isn't paying attention. Now, well, looks like he's with his patients. No, he was right there, but apparently he didn't notice. Anyway, the first time you pick one up, or buy one, it adds a note to your Pip-Boy. Buzz off product info. A tightly folded sheet of paper found in the bottle reads, Thank you for choosing Buzz off brand insect repellent. Tired of being eaten alive by pesky bugs? Can't stand the mess and odor of sprays? Our formula combines the power of garlic with patented isotopes to turn your sweat glands into a mobile chemical weapons factory. Two tablets will keep bees, mosquitoes, ticks, and other annoying insects at bay for up to one hour, and the subtle aroma will be barely noticeable to those around you. A lengthy disclaimer about side effects and health risks follows, but in indecipherably small print. And if we look at the item, the effects are insect repellent, minus one charisma, three rats, all of which the product info hints at through a rose-tinted lens. Forgive me if I pat myself on the back a little. I always try to make my mods consistent with the lore and tone of the franchise, and I'm pretty happy with how the cartoon B and the info sheet reflect pre-war company's glib attitude towards hazardous products. The brochure might be overkill. I don't know. It explains the rads and charisma debuff in a way that's hopefully immersive and darkly humorous, but let me know in the comments if you think it's just more unnecessary clutter on the notes tab. Anyway, let's get to the Robco factory. Which we can't fast travel to, but we will have a compass marker if I set the Wasteland Survival Guide as our active quest. Hey, I saw you dead, right there. Apparently, Deputy Weld respawns. I mean, he's a robot. Maybe Moira keeps him fixed up? I don't know if that's canon, but I guess it would make sense. Enclave checkpoint, but thanks to the transponder, we don't have to sneak around that. And maybe they'll even take care of whatever was chasing us. And there's Fort Independence. This wasn't on my agenda, but it wouldn't hurt to have a fast travel marker in this neck of the woods. And I was just saying last week we can trade energy weapons for relationship points with the outcasts here. Looks like whatever trouble was behind us didn't make it past the Enclave checkpoint. Good. Yeah, let's stop and see what's going on. If you're going to get yourself killed out here, you mind doing it further away from our bunker? I don't want your corpse stinking up our little patch of heaven. I'd hate it if my corpse ruined this lovely wasteland. It'd clash with the drapes. Yeah, the red would never go with all this brown. But if we remodel and still need a corpse, we'll call you, okay? I'm Defender Anne-Marie Morgan with the Outcast. Good to have someone else out here who can keep up. Who are you people? We call ourselves the Outcasts, and we collect technology to preserve it from tribals and idiot locals. And before you ask, we were cast out from that company of Zeros, who call themselves Lion's Brotherhood of Steel. You collect technology? How do I sign up? We aren't recruiting, kid. Old sap lions might trust walk-ins, but we don't. But if you want to help out, well, we might be able to work out a deal. Sounds good. I'm in. Okay, but first you'll have to talk with Protector Kasdan. You can work out the details with him. Normally, I wouldn't be wasting my time talking to a local, but Morgan tells me you can make yourself useful. So, interested in collecting technology for us? I need to know more about the job before deciding. It's simple enough. Bring in technological devices, and we'll pay you for what you find. Big things like power armor or energy weapons are best, but we'll take things like sensor units or spare parts, too. You never know what's important. In return, we'll pay you with your choice of 556 ammo, grenades, stim packs, or right away. 
I'll bet they're more useful to you out there anyway. Sadly, you're probably right. I'll take the job. That's what I like to hear. You can start immediately. You'll report directly to me. I'll take in your gear and dole out your pay. Now get cracking. Actually, I'm this close to finishing a book I'm working on, but I'll definitely be back whenever I find some loot I think you'll like. Anyway, gotta go. Later. A reliable source of stim packs and Radaway is nice, but we're pretty well stocked at the minute, especially since we have the infirmary now. Ammo doesn't give you the highest exchange rate when you trade stuff in, but it might be the best option for loose since it doesn't have any weight and we can carry it around without worrying about encumbrance until we're ready to sell it. And like I said, you also get relationship points. They're tracked behind the scenes, you can't see progress on your Pip-Boy or anything, and it doesn't make much difference out in the wasteland. Let's go the other way. Outcasts aren't hostile to the player in the first place, so it's not like improving your relationship is that beneficial, but once you make enough progress, they'll promote you from a contractor to, like, sort of an honorary member and let you into their base, where it wouldn't be terribly surprising to find some pretty good loot. And here's the Robco factory. What technological wonders await us inside? What's this? A traveling merchant with a bunch of robots? We have to see what that's about. Move along, please. Hello, stranger. I'm Tinker Joe, premier supplier of robotic parts and service throughout the DC wasteland. Pleased to meet you. I'd like to buy a robot. Of course you would, of course. Well, it just happens that I've got a beaut of a deal on this customized Gutsy. And it's not just Mr. Gutsy. He's a full-fledged sergeant. Sergeant RL-3, to be precise. The pride of General Atomics International. Comes complete with a simulated personality unit. So he's good protection and good company, too. And all yours for just 1,000 caps. You can only buy him if your karma's neutral, but it is. That's a lot of caps, but I guess it's a pretty rare find. Hey, I said it was a beaut of a deal, didn't I? But to tell the truth, rl 3 is a bit picky about the company he keeps, and he won't let himself get sold to just anyone. Makes him a bit of a tough lot to sell, if you know what I mean. But he seems to like you, so I'm not going to complain. A thousand caps is a lot. I'm surprised I have that much left after buying the infirmary. But I'll take him. I'll just transfer the codes, and you've got a deal, friend. Here's hoping for the best for you and the sergeant alike. Salutations, Commander. Sergeant RL-3, Gutsy Class, Robotic Soldier, reporting for duty. At ease, Soldier. I just need to run inside and connect a widget to the mainframe. I'm not expecting any trouble, and you don't seem like stealth is really your thing, so I want you to wait here. I will keep this location secure. I know I've said multiple times that I didn't want to have companions because even though their kills don't add to the player's kill count, there'd be constant temptation to abuse that and violate the spirit of a no-kill run. I definitely won't be taking him into dungeons, but I was thinking about letting him follow me around the world map, so if we get ambushed he can provide a distraction while I get far enough away to fast travel. And sooner or later I'll probably come out of a place and forget to tell him to resume following and then not remember where I left him anyway. We'll see how it works out. The mole rats are friendly because we took the animal friend perk when we hit level 10. And rad roaches are technically hostile, but they don't aggro on sight, only if you get close. And if they're blocking the way to any irresistible loot and we can't sneak around them, we have the buzz off. The hoarder in me is saying, don't waste the buzz off on rad roaches. The pragmatist is saying, you made the mod, you know where to find more. But an empty room with a door is even better. Especially since the showman in me is saying, wait until you get attacked by giant ants or rad scorpions so it's more dramatic. Showman wins. Another pre-war book for scribe yearling. Another stealth boy. That's the computer we need to tinker with. And a first aid kit. Average difficulty, but you don't need to hack it to install the widget but do hack it immediately when that menu closes. If you don't, the robots will be hostile when they wake up, and we do not want that. 
Zero, correct. Can't end in ing, or ein, or ist. Nice. Now, we have an optional objective to reprogram the robots. The most important one is cease total liquidation, which will make them friendly toward us. Initiate pest extermination makes them hostile to the mole rats and roaches, so we won't pick that. Although, it doesn't really make any difference because the critters are hostile to the robots, and as soon as they attack, the robots will kill them anyway. I thought there was an option to shut down the robots. Maybe it's stress testing and that makes them blow up or something? Like I said, cease total liquidation was the important one, but let's try stress testing too. Well, it didn't shut down, but at least it's not hostile. Ah, stress testing makes the robots hostile to each other. I did not know that. Let's uh, just shut the door so we don't get caught in the crossfire. Okay. Well, I guess there's nothing we can do to save the mole rats, so let's go. We'll just take some buff out in case it's another one that checks strength, not endurance. Fiddle with any interesting technology lately? I reactivated the robots and was able to modify their programming. Harnessing the technology of the past and modifying it for your own purposes? That's just the thing! Tell me all about how it worked out. Hmm. No endurance or strength. But the charisma option actually suits Luz perfectly. It worked like a charm. I only wish it were always that easy to manipulate people. Hey, robots are people too. Well, some of them. Kinda. Oh, and take my book on science. For some reason, I just can't get into the computer parts. But I've got the rest pretty much memorized. Are we done with the last chapter? Yep, that's the last bit for the toughest survival guide in the wastes. Survivors of the world rejoice! And everyone else too. Now, I just need to do a few last tweaks, and it'll be ready to print and distribute. Thanks for all the help. It certainly was an epic piece of work. So is the final product worth it? Oh my! It's, it's brilliant! Even I'm astounded by my genius. Oh, no, 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 it's more than that. By our genius. I'll share these with the traders, and soon... Everyone will know about the Wasteland Survival Guide. But now, the very first copy of our book goes to you. It wouldn't nearly be as good without your input. You're the real Wasteland Survival Guru. As a result of your painstaking research for the Wasteland Survival Guide, your survival skills have improved. And she said something about tough, so we did get the right version of the perk. Now sell loot and get armor repaired. Wadsworth? RL3. RL3? Wadsworth. And 12 episodes in, we finally get to use the infirmary. Heal yourself. Might as well get a rad scrub while we're at it. And I'm going to wait until the buff out wears off to see if we get addicted. And if so, we can cure that too. RL3 is ready for duty, sir. Wait here. I will keep this location secure. There are always giant ants in the area between Megaton and Springvale, sometimes on the road that goes to the Super Duper Mart. See if I can find one and show you how Buzz Off works. Rad Roaches really wouldn't have been a good demo because of how their AI parameters are set. It wouldn't necessarily be clear if the repellent was working or if they just weren't interested in attacking. There's one. And it definitely is interested in attacking. But, back up a little. If we take some buzz off, in a second, now it just wants to get away from our BO. And it also works on rad scorpions, even though they're not insects, they're arachnids. It lasts four minutes of real time, like most other chems, so compared to the transponder or even the animal friend perk, it's definitely not overpowered. Anyway, since this week's theme seems to be better late than never, there is one more promise we made a while back that we still haven't kept. You want to go to Big Town? 
Of course you do. I told you I'd be back, Sticky. I didn't forget. All right, let's go to Big Town. All right, yeah! Big Town, here we come. And if we can get outside and fast travel before he starts telling one of his stories, we'll consider ourselves lucky. If you've never done Sticky's escort mission the hard way, just trust me, it's terrible. This might be a little weird since we cheesed the map marker without actually going into town, but see what happens. Hey, who are you? I mean you no harm. I'm a simple traveler. And I'm already inside your gate. Right. What do you want? I just want to look around a little. Don't worry about me. I won't hurt you. In fact, I'm a pacifist. Well, you can never be too careful. Be warned, it's not safe here. Super mutants have attacked recently and carried off some of our friends. Come in, just don't cause any trouble, okay? There it is! We're almost there! Come on! Yippee! Hum, Sticky. We're already here. Now, Luz would obviously try to help, if for no other reason than she can always use new friends to steal from. Our karma's still neutral, but we gained some from doing a good job on the Wasteland Survival Guide, so it's got to be creeping back toward good. But, I need to think about how we can rescue the hostages without killing any super mutants, which is going to be tricky. So, I'm going to save here, and we'll do that next time. But at least we finally got Sticky home. And speaking of promises, it's taken me a while to complete. A friend of mine requested a special suit of armor for dog meat a while back, and I said I'd do it, but since I wasn't using companions, it might not be right away. But I just hired RL3, so I can't use that excuse anymore. And Luz would get along with a dog better than a military robot anyway. Looks like the muties missed one. I know there's already a dog armor mod out there, but this was a very specific request. So mod-wise, that's what I'm going to do next. I'm not sure how long it'll take, and I have a Halloween party to plan, so there probably won't be a video next week. Now, if you bail out when I start talking about technical stuff, don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment before you go. Buzz Off was fun to implement. I really liked the idea of insect repellent, because another item that worked like the transponder or the ghoul mask might start feeling repetitive and manipulating faction relationships didn't seem like the way to go for several reasons. First of all, I didn't want them to turn friendly. I wanted them to be repelled, like the modified mole rat repellent. Plus, unlike ghouls or the Enclave, there's no one faction that covers all mutated bugs, which would mean more complexity. And finally, faction relationships instantly affect all members of a faction, whether they're nearby or halfway across the map, and I only wanted the repellent to work on bugs that were close enough to smell you. But the game doesn't have much in the way of native support for passive abilities with an area of effect, so it required a bit of a hack. One type of object I know can trigger a script to run on multiple targets in an area is an explosion. I created a new explosion object with no visuals, no sound, and no damage, which triggers an object effect on anything in its radius. The object effect is similar to ones we've seen before, single base effect, which is script type, and the script saves the target's starting aggression and confidence stats so it can restore them when the effect wears off. Checks if they're already zero, meaning this target is already under the effect of the repellent, or it's something that naturally has zero aggression and confidence. I don't think there's anything like that in the vanilla game, but you never know what might be added by another mod. Either way, it doesn't need to do anything. Otherwise, it checks if the target is a mutated insect, or arachnid. If so, it sets their aggression and confidence to zero and stops combat, similar to how the modified mole rat repellent script works. If not, again, it does nothing. When the effect wears off, it checks if the target's aggression and confidence were altered, and if so, sets them back to where they started. The actual chem you take is an object type we haven't seen before, ingestible. It has an object script, but that's not where effects are applied. Those are in the effect list on the right. The object script is just there to add the note to your Pip-Boy the first time you pick one up, or buy one. The damage rads and reduced charisma effects are plain vanilla, used by lots of other food and chems. But the insect repellent effect is a second new base effect. We just saw the one that gets applied to the target, but we need another one for the chem that the player takes. That script is pretty simple. It has a script effect update block, which runs every frame for the duration specified in the ingestible object. 
It spawns a buzz-off explosion at the player's location, and the game applies that effect to everything in the radius. And doing that once a frame would be overkill, so it uses a timer to limit it to once every two seconds. That seemed to be the sweet spot when I was testing. Any longer and fast enemies that were just outside the radius when one explosion happened could get frighteningly close before the next one. Any shorter, and it'd just be wasting CPU cycles. The script effect start block only runs once when you first take the chem, and it just sets the timer to expired, so the first explosion will happen the first time the script effect update block runs, so there won't be a two second delay between using the item and having it take effect. And that's how buzz off works. Now, about Lucy's dialogue. Like I said, it wasn't clear to me right away that there even was a bug, but explaining why requires a little bit of background. You can see here how all of the miscellaneous quests in the game, the ones that start with MS, have the quest itself, like MS-09 for blood ties, and a follow-up that's usually the same ID with a fin suffix for finish, like MS-09 fin. That's because dialogue in a quest is only available while that quest is running. Once it's complete, dialogue for NPCs who should interact with you differently depending on what you've done goes in the Finn quest, which is started when the other quest is completed, along with awarding XP and all the other usual quest complete stuff. The dialogue to update Lucy on the status of the quest is in MS-09, and whatever the sequence of events while it's running, it handles it. If you tell her their parents are dead before you talk to Ian, she begs you to find him. After you find him, you have different options to tell her about that. If you already found him the first time you talk to her, you have different choices, and if you deliver the letter, you can tell her about that too. Pretty normal dialogue tree. But once you complete the quest, all of that dialogue becomes unavailable. And MS Finn doesn't have any of it except a topic to tell her you delivered the letter. That might be because every line of dialogue increases the size of the game file slightly, and maybe there was a design policy of limiting resource consumption to make sure the game would fit on one DVD or something. Or it might have been more philosophical, like NPC interactions are a reward, just like perks or loot for doing things right, and if you make mistakes while you're playing, no dialogue for you. But either way, it looked like more of a design choice than a bug. Now obviously, I am not averse to changing the game's behavior if I disagree with a design choice, or if I think the player experience can be enhanced in some way. Actual bug fixes are just a side hustle. So, bug or not, I decided to let you tell Lucy what happened after the quest is complete, if you didn't tell her while it was in progress. I started analyzing her dialogue to see how many topics I'd have to duplicate, and that's where the plot took an unexpected twist. She has this line in MS-09 Finn where she refuses to talk to you forever if you kill anyone in Arafu, and the family has similar lines. Killing anyone in Arafu fails the quest immediately, because even if you don't kill them all, any survivors turn permanently hostile, so no resolution is possible. Which made me wonder about her letter, because my surprisingly recent realization that you can still give it to Ian after the quest is complete is what led me down this rabbit hole in the first place. So in the quest fail code, the game removes the quest item flag from the letter so you can drop it. Which makes sense, because everyone in the family stops talking to you, so there's no way to give it to Ian, right? Well, not exactly, because it turns out failing the quest doesn't start MS-09 Finn, which means all the dialogue with Lucy and the family about a killing spree in Arafu is unreachable. And that, I'm pretty sure, is a bug, not a design decision. However, some of the other dialogue in MS-09 Finn assumes MS-09 was completed successfully, so just starting MS-09 Finn in the quest fail code wasn't an option. Plus, that still wouldn't let you tell Lucy what happened if you wait until after the quest is complete. So, I needed some overrides and some new topics. I didn't put them in APAM dialogue, because I only want them to be available after MS-09 is complete, success or fail, and that would require adding the appropriate conditions to every topic, and there's the risk I'd miss one. So, I created a new quest, APAM BT dialogue fix, BT for blood ties, which has a condition on the quest itself that MS-09 is completed, safer and easier. And all of the new post-Blood Ties dialogue goes in here. First, I overrode the brush-offs you get from different NPCs if you murder anyone in Arafu, specifically Lucy West and anyone in the family. Pretty straightforward, just like overrides we've seen before. Updating Lucy about the investigation was a little trickier. She already has the one line about the letter, but if you were able to tell her about that before telling her you found Ian, her dialogue would go from feeling vaguely off to being downright weird. 
There were a couple ways I could have forced the right order, but in the end, I overrode her letter dialogue and used that as the entry point to the whole conversation. Which was simpler in a way, but the trick was making sure it didn't repeat things the player already told her while the quest was still running, if anything. Fortunately, the vanilla game has several variables that it uses to keep track of the investigation, one of which was exactly what I needed. And unlike topics, variables in a quest script are always available, whether or not the quest is running. ms09.lucyknowsmeinmissing is initialized to zero and stays that way until you give her an update. It's set to one when you tell her their parents are dead, and two when you tell her you found Ian. I also added a new variable to APAMBT dialog fix, late update, for reasons we'll see in a minute. If you haven't told her anything, Lucy knows Ian missing is zero, and the topic to tell her their parents are dead is available. She asks about Ian, and the result script sets it to one. Unlike when MS09 is running, and there are multiple dialog branches based on the status of the investigation, there's only one set of choices here because we know the player found Ian. MS09 could be marked complete because they failed it, which could happen before they find him, but they couldn't reach this dialog because Lucy's brush off for killing people in Arafu would take precedence, and it's a forced goodbye, you can't talk to her. Well, y you can technically also fail the quest by killing Ian, but if he's dead, you found him. Anyway, you can tell her the truth, a half-truth, or a lie, which are simple overrides of the existing choices, and only necessary because the vanilla versions aren't available after MS09 is complete. If you told her their parents are dead while MS09 was running, but didn't tell her you found Ian, Lucy knows Ian missing is one, and the topic to tell her I have more info about Ian is available, with the same choices. Either way, if you tell her Ian is with the family, or just that he's alive and safe, it sets Lucy knows Ian missing to two, so the conversation can't be repeated. It also sets a Pam BT dialog fix dot late update to one, which means you didn't tell her the whole story while MS09 was running, but did eventually tell her after it was complete. If you tell her you haven't found him, nothing happens. Lucy knows Ian missing will still be one, and the option to tell her later will still be open. And again, that's the same behavior as when the quest is running. Finally, once she knows you found Ian, you can tell her you delivered the letter, if you actually did, and this is where late update comes in. In the vanilla game, Lucy has two different responses to the letter topic, a grateful but subdued version in MS09 and the bubbly I almost forgot about that version in MS09 Finn. The first one makes sense if you give her all the updates in a short period of time, or all in the same conversation, while the second makes sense if it's been a while since you gave her the bad news about her parents and the good news about Ian, and the news itself would obviously have been more important to her than the fact that the letter got delivered. Anyway, MS09 and MS09 Finn both have a variable, letter delivered, which starts out at zero, gets set to one when you give the letter to Ian, and finally two when you tell Lucy delivered it. Both of her vanilla topics only use the variable in the same quest as that topic, which also means if you deliver the letter during the quest, you have to tell her before the quest is complete, because afterwards you can't. Like the RFU killing spree lines, that feels more like a bug than a design choice, but we'll fix that in a minute. The first option is conditional on either version being one, so it works whether you delivered the letter while the quest was in progress or afterwards. It's also conditional on late update being greater than zero, meaning you didn't tell her you found Ian until after MS09 was complete, in which case you get a grateful but subdued response. The result script sets both versions of letter delivered to two, so the topic won't be repeated, and covers any other dialogue or scripts out there that might be checking one or the other, not realizing they actually need to check both. The second option is conditional on only the MS09 version of Letter Delivered being 1, and Late Update being 0, meaning the quest was still running when you told Lucy you found Ian, still running when you gave him the letter, but completed before you told her you delivered it. That closes the gap I mentioned a minute ago, and unlike the first option, which alters behavior that might have been a design choice, this one is more of a bug fix. So, bottom line. If MS09 is still running when you tell her you delivered the letter, you get the vanilla response, grateful but subdued, because it presumably hasn't been that long since you told her their parents are dead. If you tell her you found Ian while MS09 is running, but you don't deliver the letter until after it's complete, you get the bubbly vanilla, oh, I almost forgot that response, which, like I said, makes sense in that context. If you tell her you found Ian and give him the letter while MS09 is running, but don't tell her you delivered it, you get the bug fix line. Same voice lines for the same reason. 
And if you don't tell her anything until after MS-09 is complete, you get the new option, which is grateful but subdued because, again, you're telling her everything all at once. And finally, while I was testing, I thought her generic Megaton resident greeting felt weird if she knows Ian is missing. So I overrode her greeting with the same conditions as the corresponding topic, and now she'll open with any word about my brother. And there was a similar situation if you hadn't told her their parents were dead, but this one has a couple additional conditions, so she'll say, please tell me you have good news if she gave you the quest, but just the generic Megaton resident greeting if you visited Arafu without talking to her, and it started that way. You can still tell her about her parents, because by the time the quest is complete, you know they're all related. She just won't have a special greeting, because she never asked you to go there, so she's not waiting for any news. And that's it. As always, thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time.